first thing I would say is I think the great majority of us have difficulty finding our purpose. So that's not, that's not something that, uh, that comes naturally, I don't think. But my reaction to it is, my advice or my opinion is, people that are trying to think about that should spend time in self-reflection. I, I think you, almost, you, have to, you have to get out of the, the hassle, the day-to-day, what do other people think, what do other people expect of me, uh, and, you, and you have to almost get off by yourself to think through you know, what do I think about my life? What, you know, the, the, if, you happen to, if you happen to kind of realize, okay, life is incredibly short, okay? So once, once you buy into the fact, this is, a pretty, this is a pretty short deal here, okay? All right, so once you realize it's a short deal, well, what really matters and, and what doesn't? And different people are gonna take different views on that, right? And I always tell folks, I am never, I should never be in a position to tell people what it ought to be because you know, your purpose is going to be different than Dave's, different than mine, different than Harry's, right? It, it, everybody ought to, it ought to be different. But I, I, I literally, for me, I think about it and say, well, once I realize how short it is, then it becomes a little easier to figure out, for me, what's important and what's not, right? Um, it's, I say to myself, well, there's certain values that I think are important. So, hey, uh, maybe what I'm called to do a little bit is to try to influence other people so that they can maybe think about those values, right? So... That's a big thing for me, right? As a spouse with my five children, to have an impact on people's lives of what's your purpose, what matters, that's a, that's a big deal for me, okay? So, so when you think about your purpose, it helps me figure out what's important and what's not important, right? I'll, I'll give you the flip side of it. The flip side of what's not important, okay? Um, and part of this is self-reflection. Part of this is, comes from my family or whatever. But this sounds kind of trite, but my, my father uh, always had a great line. I don't know who he stole it from, but he had a great line saying to me, even when I was a little kid, he'd say, uh, have you ever seen a hearse go into a cemetery, you know, with a coffin in it, have you ever seen a hearse go into a cemetery with a U-Haul attached to it? He said, I can tell you right now, there are a lot of people who think all this material stuff is going with them. He said, either that, either that, or they must think they're going to live forever. And he always used to tease me. He said, Harry, if you don't think it's going with you, and you're not going to live forever, you've got to ask yourself, how much of this stuff do you really need, right? Now, if you've done well, you worked hard, you know, you want to buy yourself a car or something. But some people just, they get so crazed about these possessions. It's, you know, is that, is that your purpose? Does that really matter? Have you thought that through? I think one of the reasons that many of us struggle, I've been thinking a lot about this, struggle with our purpose is that we get very wrapped up into what are other people going to think. You know, it's like, oh, well, I'm thinking about doing this, but what are people going to think? If I were to do that, what do people think about that? And, and I better be careful because I'm really worried about what people are going to think. Well, here's another little story, and I, I, I can't remember, Dave, whether I mentioned this in your class or not, but one of the things that I was very lucky, uh, when my parents retired, um, they decided, they retired, they were like 65 or so, and they retired, they decided they wanted to make a little difference. And they, my, my father liked to sing, not a great singer. Uh, my mother played the piano, definitely not a great pianist. But they decided they were going to go around the nursing homes all around, and they put on these little show for nursing homes, right? Well, first of all, if you're not very good, the nursing home, they have nobody coming. So, you know, compared to what, right? So they were, they were pretty big going to nursing homes. And every once in a while, I would go to visit them, and they'd say, oh, you know, we're going to do a show at the nursing home. So I don't, know if you ever, I don't know if you ever spent much time in a nursing home, but it was amazing to me because I'd go to these nursing homes, and, you know, they put on their show, then they have a little cake and coffee, and you talk to these people in their 80s or 90s. And I was like in my mid-20s, you know, early 30s, and it was amazing. I learned a tremendous amount from these people because, you know, one of the things I think as a country, another opinion we've lost, is since a lot of us don't spend as much time with our parents or our grandparents, we don't live together the way we used to with multiple, multiple generations in the same household, you kind of lose something, right? And well, the, one of the things that I think about this, and I've used this, I don't know if in Dave's class, but I've used this example a lot. I was talking to one guy uh, at, at one of these nursing homes and it had a big impact on me. He literally, uh, we were talking about, invariably you get into what did you do with your life and, you know, what did you do differently or whatever. And this fellow said, well, uh, I, was the, uh, I was a pretty big lawyer for a company. And he said, um, when I was about 50, I decided what I really wanted to do was teach. You know, I was sick of the whole legal thing. I really, really wanted to teach. I wanted to get out of this legal thing. He said, but he had, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. And he said, Harry, the reason I didn't do it, I was really worried about what people would think. But he said, let me give you some advice now. He says, I'm 91 years old. He said, let me give you some advice. And I think this is true, by the way. He said, anybody in this room, he said, you can divide 
you can look at all the people in the world and you can divide them into two groups. He said the first group, if you're really lucky, it could be as many as nine or ten people. It may not be that many, but it could be as many as nine or ten, and then you got everybody else. He said this first group of nine or ten people, he said, these are the people who truly love you. They truly care about you. It could be your significant other, it could be your parents, your children, your best friends. He said, these are these people you absolutely don't have to impress, right? Because these are the people when you say, hey Dave, I just became the president, their immediate comment is, well, are you taking care of yourself? You know, are you healthy? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you, are you happy? Because these people you don't have to impress because they already love, they already care about you, right? Now he said, let's talk about everybody else. He said, in the case of everybody else, he said, these are not bad people, but the primary thing they're focused on is themselves. They don't have a whole lot of time to worry about you. So the guy, 91 years old, he goes, so he says, I've asked myself, who are these people? Who am I worried about? Okay, I really ought to take the time to figure out what do I really want to do? What's my purpose? What's my calling? What, what really, the blink of an eye I'm passing through here, what, what, what really matters? And I thought, wow, if more people could stop worrying about what other people think, boy, we, we, could, be, we could be pretty well off, right? Um, so those are, those are things I think of sort of on that journey of starting to think a little bit about, a little bit about purpose.